What's up everybody? I'm Huzefa and I'm here to talk to you about the PSAT. So first of all, what is the PSAT? PSAT is kind of like what it sounds like. It's essentially a pre-SAT and it's something that you're either going to take your sophomore year or your junior year or both. The way to look at the PSAT is a warm up or practice run for the real SAT. The actual SAT is the test that you're going to take to apply to colleges. Uh, different colleges are going to look at those scores combined with your GPA and then determine whether or not they want to give you admission to their school. Now, why do some students take the PSAT their sophomore year in high school? This is often done just to give students a rough idea of how they will score on the real SAT because the tests are actually very, very similar. So let me talk about what's on the actual PSAT. When you take the PSAT, there's going to be four sections. There's going to be a writing section, a reading section, and then two math sections. So the actual SAT is scored out of 1,600 points, whereas the PSAT is scored out of only 1,520 points. The reading and writing sections combine for a total of 760 points. And then again, the math sections total up for 760 with a combined max score total possible of 1,520. If you're a sophomore taking the test, don't worry about it. Go in there, do your best, and use the test as a metric to tell you how much practice you need thereafter. If you're taking the PSAT as a junior, it's a little bit different. You will have a chance to use your PSAT score to qualify for something called a National Merit Scholarship. Qualifying for a National Merit Scholarship varies from state to state. Uh, different states have different indices. To qualify as a National Merit Semifinalist in California, for example, you need an index of 223. But what does that even mean? The way you calculate your index is as follows. You take your combined score for the verbal section, double it, add it to your score overall for the math section, and then take that number and then chop off the last zero. And if you got above a 223 and live in California, there is a high likelihood that you will be a candidate to qualify as a semifinalist for the National Merit Scholar Program. Let's look at a concrete example. Let's pretend that you got a 720 on the verbal section and you got a 700 on the math section. So that is a combined score of 1420 out of a possible 1520. It's a really good score. So you take your 720 for the verbal, double it up to 1440, and then add the 700 on for the math. So that becomes 2140. You take that, you chop off the last zero, and you get an index of 214. Now, that's a really high score and a really good score. But if you lived in California, you wouldn't make the cutoff to be a National Merit Scholar semifinalist. In other states, that may stand up and that may get you where you want to go and allow you to be a semifinalist. The bottom line is, whether you're a sophomore or a junior, the PSAT, while it can open some great opportunities and give you some really good insights, is nothing to lose sleep over. It's not something that should be considered super stressful. Go out, do your best, but don't worry about it beyond that. The truly important test is the actual SAT or the actual ACT that colleges will look at and will make a determination of whether or not they want to admit you based on that score. I hope this answers every question you had about the PSAT, but if it doesn't, make sure to leave a question in the comment section below. Take it easy.